welcome to your daily dose of mathematics in today's video we're going to do a very important questions in p3 integration uh, we will have one part from differentiation and we will have two more parts from integration this is june 2009 uh, this is considered one of the most tricky uh, questions that uh, ever came with substitution integration with substitution so i will just display the question first and so that you guys can take a look on it and I would highly recommend that you guys do try this question before jumping on to the solution. So this is the question right in front of you right now and uh, let me start with the solution if you have already attempted it. So we're going to do the first part first. So the first part is that we have to find the stationary point uh, or the minimum or the maximum point. So this part is from differentiation. The equation is y is equal to x squared square root of 1 minus x squared uh, where we know that x is greater than or equal to 0 and we are going to find the minimum point of this curve so for minimum point we are going to differentiate this question uh, this curve and put it equal to 0 so we can clearly see that for dy by dx we will use a product rule over here so first of all, let's keep x square as it is. Differentiate uh, this uh, term, so that would be one over two. Power will come backwards and get multiplied. One minus x squared will have power negative one by two, multiplied by differentiation of the inside box, that would be negative two x. Plus, the square root would stay as it is and differentiation of x square would be 2x. So this is our product rule. I always advise to apply the first step of differentiation in a very slow manner so that you do not make silly mistakes. Now, let's move on from here and uh, let's simplify some things. If I write this as dy by dx is equals to, I think we'll be able to simplify this two with this two. This will go away and um, this will eventually be written as minus x cube upon square root of one minus x squared. Uh, this one minus x squared had a power of negative one by two. If we bring it to the denominator, this will become positive one by two and we will have square root of one minus x squared plus this term would become two x square root of one minus x squared. Uh, so this is our final uh, differentiation. Let's put it equal to zero and start solving this for x. So if I put zero is equal to minus x cube over under root of one minus x squared plus two x under root of one minus x squared. Uh, this is a negative term. I'm going to bring it to the positive side. So this will become minus x cube over under root of, sorry, this will become positive when we bring it to the left side. This will become 1 minus x squared is equals to 2x square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, from the here onwards, I'm going to cross multiply this under root 1 minus x squared to this under root 1, is 1 minus x squared. And we get, guys, you must be able to foresee that this power 1 by 2 and this power 1 by 2 would add up and this square root will go away. So we will have x cubed is equals to 2x times 1 minus x squared. So under root 1 minus x squared and under root 1 minus x squared will get multiplied and under root would go away. We will be left with 1 minus x squared. Now let's multiply this and bring it to another step over here. So now we have x cubed is equals to 2x minus 2x cubed. So this will become 3x cubed is equal to 2x. 3x cubed minus 2x will be equal to 0. And uh, from here, let's take x common. Or even add a step before this, even if over here, if some of you are inclined to cancel this x, 
you have to first know a fact, uh, otherwise which, uh, without which we will not be able to cancel this x. So if you're inclined towards cancelling this x with this and leaving x square over here, we have to follow a rule. You're not allowed to divide with a variable term unless we're sure that it is non-zero. And this is where the graph of the question was useful. On the graph, you guys can see that the x coordinate of m is not equal to zero. So we know that x is non-zero at m. That is why I can cancel this x. If this information was not available, we would not have been able to cancel this x. In that case, you would have to bring all the terms to the left-hand side, take common and factorize, and then later I'll sol solve with that. So now this will become three x squared is equal to two. And now we can solve with this. So x squared is two by three and x is equal to square root of uh, 2 by 3. Now we have to find the exact value of x, so this is the exact value of x right here. For the first part, there is an important thing to be answered though, that when we are taking square root, should we include po uh, a plus minus sign over here or not? The answer is no, because again, the diagram shows that the m x coordinate of m is on the positive x-axis, and hence you will have a positive value for x. So this is the exact value for this final answer. So this is the first part, now let's move on to the second part. Okay guys, so uh, now let's move on to the next part. Next part is integration by substitution. So this is the equation that we have and we have to use x is equal to, uh, I think, let me check the substitution. So the substitution is x is equal to sine theta and our goal is to show that integral of this area would be one by four or of, so from pi by two to zero, of sine square two theta, but over in the end, five in the d theta. And uh, we have to show that the area covered by the graph is equivalent to this. Now, for uh, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to understand the shape of the graph and we're going to find the x uh, limits for x. So the shape is approximately like this. And this whole area is the shaded area, as we can see in the main diagram of the question. And to find this area, I'm going to use the limits for x from zero till this point. Let's call this point as a for now. Now, first, our first task should be to find the value of a. To find the value of a, what we should do is, for a, let's put y is equals to zero. Because it is on x-axis, so zero is equals to x squared times under root of one minus x squared. We can see that at a, the value of x is non-zero, and hence we can divide with a variable. So this x squared can go to the other side and this will become zero is equals to square root of one minus x squared. Square root would go away and this will become zero squared would become zero. This will be one minus x squared. x squared is equals to one and we remove the square and x will be equal to and not, um, normally we would say plus minus one, but over here we would not say plus minus one, we would say only one, because again, the graph is here to tell us that the x, x coordinate for a must be positive. So this value is one now. Now we know that to find this area, we have to integrate this equation from zero till one. So x squared under root of one minus x squared dx. Now let's start our work with substitution now. Uh, we have a given substitution which is x is equals to sine theta. So first of all differentiate the substitution dx over d theta will become cos theta and make dx the subject. That is our first task that will be cos theta d theta. This is our first substitution, this is going to come over here. And let's start substituting other values as well. So I have integration of x square would become sine square theta. I'm going to replace x as sine theta, so this would be sine square theta, and it would be square root of one minus cos square theta. And dx will become cos theta d theta. So this will become cos theta d theta. All right, so this is sine square theta, this is one minus cos square. Guys, this will become, uh, sorry, this was supposed to be, I think I made a mistake over here. This is one minus sine square. 
I'll explain quickly what happened over here. So I was going to replace x with sine theta. So this would be 1 minus sine square theta. And now 1 minus sine square theta would later on become cos square theta. So this would be under root of cos square theta times cos theta d theta. Now you guys can see that this cos square theta square root will be, just leave us a cos theta the square root and the square would go away and this cos theta and cos theta will get multiplied and will become cos square theta so this will become sine square theta and cos square theta d theta as you guys can see that i have fully simplified this equation but i'm really far away from what i have to prove now let's see what differences we can spot we can see that the angle is singular over here and this is a double angle and we have to now think that somehow to bring this for, uh, this expression into a double angle so let's think about some identity that fits over here i always tell my students to remember that whenever you see a sine and a cos term getting multiplied you're ne really near to sine two theta identity so let me show you a maneuver uh, a tactic that that is very useful for you so if i see sine two theta I can see that it would be equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. If I isolate sine theta and cos theta from here, it will become equal to sine theta cos theta will become equal to sine 2 theta over 2. And this is going to become really useful just in a second because we can see this is sine theta cos theta whole square. Both have a square on it. And I can say that this is equivalent to integral of sine theta cos theta whole squared d theta. Now we know that sine theta cos theta can be written as sine 2 theta over 2. So we can place this over here and this will become equal to sine 2 theta over 2 whole squared d theta. Now we are almost there. Open the square. This will become sine square theta sine squared 2 theta d theta. And this 2 squared will become 4. We can write this 1 over 4 over here or we can take it outside the integral sign and write over here. So this is 1 over 4 sine squared 2 theta. Now there is one thing left that you must have noticed. We have not addressed the limits that have changed till yet. So let's change the limits. So for the upper limit, I had the upper limit as 1 over here and the lower limit was 0. So first of all, change the lower limit. So we know that x is equals to sine theta. And the lower limit is 0. For 0 is equals to sine theta. And you guys can see the sine has a value of 0 when angle is 0. So this angle will become 0. So the lower limit is still 0. I'm going to put the lower limit over here. For upper limit, now, for upper limit, I know x is equals to sine theta is my substitution. The upper limit that I was using for x was 1. And let's transform it to theta. So 1 is equals to sine theta. We know that the value of sine is 1 when the angle is theta is pi by 2. So this is how I get this limit. This is 1 over 2 pi. So this is the second part of this question. This uses integration by substitution. It checks your entire concept in depth. It sees if you are really good at maneuvering in your trigonometric identities, then you have to change the limits as well. Now let's go on to the third part and let's see what happens over there. All right guys, so for the next part, uh, we have to integrate this and uh, many students found this integration particularly difficult and I would like to point out that this is an integration that you must have memorized through your notes, through when you were studying the curriculum for this, sub uh, this chapter. Now we teach you guys how to integrate sine square and uh, that is very easy that you, uh, you guys just have to remember that you have to use 
Okay, so we know that sine square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2. Now, we have to use this double angle variation to get to that. Now, we can clearly see that we have sine square 2 theta over here. So, if I put two, th if I have theta over here, my angle stays 2 theta in this in identity. If I take 2 theta at this place, I will have to use 4 theta over here. So, if I write the substitution for sine square 2 theta, it will become 1 minus cos 4 theta divided by 2. I'm going to use this substitution over here. And this was the entire trick for the question. It will not create any more troubles in the solution as you guys will be able to see from here onwards. So I will have 1 over 4 times integral of, this will be 1 minus cos 4 theta divided by 2 d theta. So take 1 over 2 outside, this will become 1 over 8 times integral of 1 minus cos 4 theta d theta. Now, we can uh, integrate both of these separately and we will write 1 over 8, square bracket start, and we will integrate 1 separately and we will integrate cos 4 theta separately. Now, this is very comfortable as you guys can see that if we make cos operator over here, the box will become 4 theta. We will have to introduce 4 over here and 1 over 4 over here. Now, the conditions are complete for the operator. Let's remove these three things from here and cos will be integrated to sine. It will become 1 over 8 times integral of 1 would become theta minus 1 over 4. Integration of cos 4 theta will become sine 4 theta. So this is the final integration. Now all that is left to us is to apply the limits carefully. So let's start to apply the limits in a careful manner. So I have to apply the limits from pi by 2 till 0. So let's apply the first limit. It will become 1 by 8 times uh, pi by 2 minus 1 by 4 times sine 4 times pi by 2. This will be the first limit minus lower limit would be 0. 1 by 8 times 0 minus 1 by 4 times sine of 4 times 0. So this is the lower limit. So for the lower limit, uh, first of all, let's check sine of 0 would become 0. This is 0, so this lower, entire lower limit will become 0. For the upper limit, let's do some calculations. So this will be 1 over 8 times pi by 2 minus 1 by 4 times. So 4 times pi by 2, it will become 2 pi. Now we know sine 2 pi is basically sine 360. That is again 0. So this will become 0 as well. And now we are having a very simplified answer. So this is 1 by 8 into pi by 2. So the final answer is going to become pi over 16. So this is our final answer to this integral. The major idea that you guys had to remember for this integration was basically the use of double angle identity that we use for even and odd powers of sine and cos. If you're not uh, very much familiar with this idea, I would highly recommend to go find my video in my playlist or you can also go to the notes that are available on the website where you can you guys can see this maneuver being explained once you've seen that uh, you guys have to know that how to move uh, your angle from theta to 2 theta in a double angle identity if you guys become familiar with that i'm sure this question will become very easy for you um, that being said I think this is one of the harder questions of integrations that students have seen in past papers. This was 2009, but I think this is a very good question if you guys want to understand the basics of number one, uh, integration by substitution, and secondly, odd even powers of sine and cos. If you have liked this video, please share it with your, with your friends. If you have any suggestions, any complaints, anything that you want us to explain in detail, do leave us a comment below in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.